instead, we're going to learn something in 11.2 called the quadratic formula. However, I'm going to keep one of these on the board because what we're going to do in this example, we're going to solve a quadratic equation once and for all, which means we're going to do it universally and thereby create a formula you can use all the time that works just with the coefficients. It's a pretty awesome idea. I'm so glad I had it. The quadratic formula. Do you agree that any quadratic equation can be written as ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Yep. Do you agree that any quadratic can be written that way? This has an x squared term, an x term, and a constant, yeah? Everything can be written as one, on, off to one side and zero on the other side. You with me still? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to use completing the square to create a formula. I'm going to show you the process. What I want you to do right now, uh, if, if you'd like to, if you'd like to, take notes on this, but really I just want you following. You'll never have to show me this. I just need you to understand where it comes from. You got it? So take notes if you want, but I'm going to move pretty fast. I just want you following. I want you to, to follow each step and see, oh, this is where it comes from. Because I always hated it when my teachers would give me formulas, but never exactly explain how you got them. Like, well, fine, I can use that, but it doesn't make any sense. What we're doing here is we're going to solve this in general by completing the square. Notice, I haven't told you what A is, what B is, and what C is. I'm going to solve it anyway. It's not good like that, you know? Whatever. So this is by completing the square. We're going to follow the steps to completing the square right now. The steps to completing the square said, first off, you need to get your constant term off to the other side. You follow? What's my constant term here? C, B. I'm going to subtract C. So I get AX squared plus BX equals negative C. True? Yep. The next step was, step number two, said you need to somehow get rid of that coefficient. What's the coefficient I need to get rid of here? A. So I'm going to divide everything by A. What happens is I'm going to get x squared plus b over ax, notice how that's a fraction, equals negative c over a. Are you still OK so far? Are you sure? So constant term, gone. Divide by that coefficient, no problem. I have that. Next step was the moneymaker step. It said, take that middle term. This one. Take half of it. Now, let me show you something if you, in case you never saw this before. If you want to take half of a fraction, for instance, if you want to take half of one third, half of one third would be the same thing as multiplying by one half, right? That's going to be one sixth. In other words, to take half of this fraction, you just put a two there. You multiply by two on the denominator, and that takes half of it. You're basically dividing it by 2. Do you, you okay with that one? So if I want to take half of b over a, what I'm going to do is say, oh, b over a, half of that is b over 2a. That's half of b over a. Are you okay on that one? So I take half of this term, and I square it. That's exactly what we did here. We took half of this, divided by another 2. We divided by another 2 here. Then we squared it, and we got this thing. And we added that to both sides. So I'm going to add, so notice this is b squared over, what's this? B, b squared over over how much? 4a squared. 4a, 4a? 4a squared. 4A squared. You agree that this is this? <coughs> Remember, this is the key step here. I've taken half of this, check. I've squared it, check. 
I've added it to both sides. Well, not yet. I'm going to add this to both sides. So I'm adding this b squared over 4a squared to both sides. Well, this is going to give me, watch carefully, on the left-hand side, I have x squared plus b over ax plus b squared over 4a squared equals, on the right-hand side, I have negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. That was the hardest part. How many of you feel okay with the hardest part? Middle row, are you guys okay with it? Where it's coming from? So, got rid of the constant, divided by this coefficient, taking this middle term, just like this one, divided it by 2, that means you just have another 2 on the denominator, squared it, that means you're going to get b squared over 4a squared, added it to both sides. That's the idea. We add that to both sides. Here we have x squared plus b over ax plus b squared over 4a squared. Bang. We got negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. Got it. The next step is, I'm going to leave this alone for a second. I'm just going to work on this left-hand side for, for one step. I'm going to factor it. Now, according to this, how we factor this thing. If you try to do a diamond problem on this one, you're crazy, all right? You can't, you can't do that. You have to know what a perfect square trinomial is. This is a perfect square trinomial. What it is, is x plus that middle term divided by 2. So in our case, we're going to have x plus, what's going to go there? What do, you, do you see it? It's on the board. What's going to go, what's going to go right there? It's on the board right now. B over 2a. Do you see why b over 2a is going to go there? It's whatever you get before you square it. On the right-hand side, yes, it looks a little nasty. I'm going to work on that in just a bit. On the right-hand side, I have negative c over a plus b squared over 4 a squared. Raise your hand feel okay getting down that far. Good deal, all right. Let's work on the right-hand side, because right now that thing is just ugly. How do you combine two fractions? Common denominators. Now, fortunately, in Chapter 7, you learned how to find a common denominator with this. Our LCD here would be 4a squared. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do to find a common denominator, to get our common denominator, I'm going to multiply this by 4a over 4a. Do you see why? Yep. Left-hand side, I'm going to keep that the same for just a while. Right-hand side, I get, notice, so I still have a negative. I've got negative 4ac. Do you see where the negative 4ac is coming from? All over 4a squared plus b squared over 4a squared. Am I successful? Do I, well, I know I'm successful. <laughs> do, I, do I have a common denominator is what I'm asking. Yes. Yeah, I do. I can make that into one fraction. Now, when I do it, I know that my denominator is going to be 4a squared. True? On my numerator, I've got negative 4ac, I've got plus b squared. Are you with me? But I'm going to write it differently. Watch on the board carefully. I'm going to write the b squared first. I'm going to write the minus 4ac second. Is that okay with you? Are you sure? So b squared first minus 4ac. Remember, you don't have to write this down. You're never going to have to do this in my class. If you, if you want to follow, great. Write down if you'd like to to look at it later. That, that'd be fantastic. But I really do need you following here and being with me, okay? That's more important. Are you okay getting down that far? Right now, we're good enough to take the square root of both sides. We have this the way we want it. This right here, by the way, that little piece is called the discriminant. Can you say discriminant? <laughs> not discriminate, okay? We're not discriminating. This is discriminant. Um, what's going to tell you is how many solutions you're going to get and what type they are. It's kind of cool. So we're good enough right now to take the square root of both sides. Of course, when you take the square root of both sides, what must you have? Hey, you're going to have two solutions here, just like before. 
you're going to have a plus and minus. Now, I know this doesn't look that great, but you're going to see in a minute we're going to be able to work with it. On the left-hand side, what happens with the square and the square root? Go on. Notice how we're using like everything we've learned in this class up to this point, pretty much. Everything we've learned besides like absolute value and inequalities to get to here. All the algebra. X plus B over 2A. Those are gone. On the right-hand side, I have plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all divided by 4a squared. So far so good? Now you're going to see something that we've done before just, just a little bit earlier. Right here on this side, I'm going to split this up as the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. We've actually done that so already today. Actually, I'm going to show that step to you, too. So I'm just splitting this up. What's the square root of 4a squared? How much is the square root of 4a squared? How much? Hey, we've done that in this class, right? Cool. Plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. Where did the square root go? You did it. Right there. 2a squared, uh, 4a squared gives you... When you take the square root, 2a. You know what? There's only two more steps. First step, solve for x. How am I going to solve that for x? Subtract b over 2a. Of course, you mean by both sides. <coughs> of course. I know this, we haven't had this on the board, but does this look familiar compared to one of the problems we just completed? Yeah. Kind of cool, right? We actually have a com common denominator already. We're going to put this together as one fraction. When you put it together as one fraction, what you're going to get is, notice that negative, I can associate that with the numerator. I'm going to do negative b. Plus or minus is going to stay on the top of my fraction just like it did before. The square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by, notice how this is a common denominator now, all divided by what's going to be on the bottom? Yeah. Negative b plus or minus b squared, square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. That's it. <laughs> no, trust me. Isn't it? Trust me. This way is easier. I'll prove it to you in five seconds. Yes. Um, that B square, it stays in the square root? Yes. You cannot simplify that because it's connected with the subtraction. You can't split that up. That only works with multiplication if it's not connected by subtraction or addition. Okay, now, why? Why, Ms. Ryan? Why? This sucks. Why? No, 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 no. This doesn't suck. Trust me. This right here completed the square, right? And complete the square once and for all, which means you never have to do this again. Which means that if you look at this, this is going to be very interesting to you. It will. Brainwash me right now. It will be interesting. Does this have any x's in it? This just has coefficients. Notice a, b, and c are numbers, right? Numbers. This means if you look here and you find your numbers and you plug them in, you automatically get your answer. X equals. That's your answer. Is that awesome? Yes, yeah. no work. No work. Just plug in numbers. Now, I can tell you, even though this is right here, this is the formula. That's all you got to do. A lot of people screw this thing up. You know why? Well, 